Hip-Hop. Shade 4 5. I have the B Tracy G here. Um, I'm going to bring my next guest up. This young man, to me, is um, a forwarder, a free-minded individual who has been able to carve a path from himself, being able to really, through his talents and his vision, uh, create something that's really amazing, you know, a space where stories are being told uh, that are relatable to people who look like us, you know, in a way that we really haven't seen in an organized effort like this. And I'm speaking about the platform Urbana. When I say Urbana, may we clap. Urbana, may. Uh, tone, that's your cue, Tone. When I say Urbana. <laughs> 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 let, me, let, me, let me start it off. Thank, thank you, Tracy. I'm out there. Tone, tone knew it's his first abort. He's learning, though. He's getting the crash. Tone getting the figure education in one week. Um, Urbana May is a culture company. It empowers black and brown audiences by making culture hero through our comics, cultural designs, and comic media activation. Urbana May is kicking off open spaces. This is a year-long initiative to fill the gap between retention and representation, partnering to create physical, virtual, and mental spaces, imaging oneself in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics being inspired by those who have done so and gained the resources needed to move ahead, which brings us to our guest, Marie Smith. And I want to welcome Chris Walker and Marie Smith to the platform to talk about STEM. Hey, and here hey. they are. Yo, yo, to the show. Welcome yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Thank you. Hey. hey, what's going on? What's going on? I've I been on hold for a minute, but re We just got, you know, we just flow here, Marie. Can you, can you forgive me? I flow all day, every day. So you got bars. Yes. <laughs> okay, you got bars. Sound like you got bars. Right. right. Sound like an MC. <laughs> <laughs> Marie got bars, y'all. We got to hear some stem bars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got the name. I got the name, but I ain't got no bars. <laughs> you ain't got no bars. Uh, okay, you know. No, you no, still, no. I love music, though. I love everything about music. It's what long stream means. As much I learned music and programming in the same year. So. Oh really? Okay, so you learn music programming in the same year. I want to talk about mm-hmm. that, and then and you've done a lot of work um, in 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 the music field through STEM. I want Chris, if you don't mind, Marie, to break down what it is that we're doing this initiative, um, um, Open Spaces, and talk about STEM. Chris, can can you take it away from here? I can. I can. Thank you. It's good to be on again. Uh, let's talk to the team. But yeah. So hey, hey. and. Hello. And then, Sway, I always, you know, I always love how you bring us on. So thank you for that and how you help to talk about what we're doing. And like you said, it's about the culture and talking about the culture and the ways and making culture the hero. And we know STEM is important to us, right? Like, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, programming or trying to get a job at, you know, some big company, right? It's a part of our lives. and We've always seen the culture be innovative and have ingenuity. You know, when I think about Grandmaster Flash and, you know, inventing a crossfader, you know, he was basically being, you know, uh, an electronic engineer. You know, when you think about that level of creativity and ingenuity that's in our culture, you know, STEM is a great for that to be activated. It creates great job opportunities uh, for for the future. But as we've seen with technology, you know, with the rise of various issues with AI, you know, this kind of programming that's happening uh, with various social media platforms, it's also important for us to be part of that space. And so with our banner made being this, you know, culture company and as they do it for the culture and this important, we are leaning into it and back in the play of the community of, you know, black and brown folks who really want to be in that space and also working with the allies who, who want to help us. So that's really what the initiative is about. And then using comic book and, you know, sci-fi art, storytelling and all that stuff that gets you excited about STEM possibilities and, moves it from just being kind of, you know, sometimes a little bit rote or, you know, dare I say a little bit boring and making it fascinating or or relatable, right? Like those that, you know, our kids are doing every day, you know, at the house, hanging out with them, thinking about, you know, cryptocurrency, all of these things are stumped. So how can we as our band of the storytelling that we do continue to raise that excitement, but also raise the bar when it comes to companies and brands who are also excited and want to work with the community giving them a better way to work with the community and helping translate some of the things that they have. And, you know, Marie talked about 
to some of the great opportunities. But as we know, put it in a cultural lane, get a little bit of flavor, get it on sway so people can hear about it. You know, mm-hmm. so that's what we're doing. Love it. Open, sp- open Spaces is a program that's launching in 2022 in Love Letter yeah. to STEM EP. And I was reading Marie's Love Letter uh, to STEM, and I want to bring Marie up to the up on the mic. Uh, part of your love letter, you said, I never imagined that I would be the pioneers for EA Sports Games, be a part of an Academy Award winning team for technology, direct the, yeah. presen- the presentation for the Academy Awards. What are these things that you've been involved in? And congratulations. I mean, your this letter alone would make me want to get into STEM. <laughs> can, can, can you talk about your introduction to STEM and then how did you get on involved in some of these projects? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I started programming because, you know, my parents are both geniuses. My dad's passed on rest in peace. But uh, they didn't have – they were they were really engineers in the making. They were just these multifaceted people, and they didn't have the opportunity to, to do anything with it. So my dad became a cop, and my mom became a teacher. But along the way, my mom really tried – my mom was in engineering, law, and medicine. And she mm. dropped out of all three of those things because she didn't have any support. Really, that was kind of the bottom line. And so when she the program – she taught me how to program. If she was learning physiology, learning physiology. If she was learning law, I was learning law. So when she was learning programming, I mean, that was the one that really stuck with me. She, and dad was like, well, we got to do something with this equipment. Dad paid mad money for the computer <laughs> and all that, you know. So he was like, hey, if you want to play with it, you know, go ahead. And uh, from then on, you know, people would ask me when I applied for jobs, do you know computers? And I was like, yeah, of course I know computers. But I, and I didn't, I thought that was like everybody did that. And I didn't know it wasn't a, it wasn't a thing not for males, not for females, not for black, not for white. Nobody knew computers, so I just kept getting hired and getting jobs. And then um, when I went to USC, uh, I, I wound up applying to school because of a friend of mine who knew John Singleton. And uh, I thought, you know, what the hell? I applied to that. It sounds better than you know some other academic, I, I, I did really well in school, so it sounded better than like Harvard or MIT mm-hmm. <laughs> to me. So I was like, I want to have fun. I want to be with black people. I didn't know there was only like three black people in the school, but uh, from there, uh, I applied to a startup and that startup was, their whole mission was about technology and, and they just let me, my, my mentor just gave me just free reign to learn and to be, uh, which is the whole story behind that. But he just, he was like, go for it. And so I actually became a vice president by the time I was like 25 Whoa. Um, of that startup. And that startup wound up being rolled up into AOL. If you remember AOL. Though. Of course. Well, if we remember AOL. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that low. AOL, the OG yeah, yeah, of this yeah, internet yeah. shit. So, so back in the day, yeah, we was building apps back in the day. And we was messing with Holland and all kinds of stuff. I mean, we, was, we were imaging people we worked on the Buster Rhymes and Janet Jackson videos what's it gonna be and, and we did Buster's part wow and, so wait 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 so and see this is a conversation that has to be heard because when people say hear stem and cricket attested this they they think it's something that's unreachable like it's just a, right. I don't know what it is like it's so unaccessible but you've seen it at work if you saw the what you what is it what you want to be that that was yeah, one of the most here. at that time not the most expensive videos made correct yeah yeah what was the yeah, budget so on that video with, we were one of the few we were one of the few that had an imaging machine Buster stood in the machine and got scanned his whole body got turned into a 3d uh, 3d model mm-hmm. and we were one of the few studios in the world that had that from a group out of stanford and so uh, paul allen the late great paul allen from microsoft had funded that company and uh we were one of the studios to get that through various sections and so we got to scan a lot of people <laughs> and a lot of things during that time. So, but Buster was one of them. Wow. Yeah. I think to Sway's point, folks tend to separate creativity from STEM. You know what I mean? They think cre- creative jobs mm-hmm. is only like right or being front of camera or, you know, the typical direction our brain goes when it comes to creativity. But that's such a good example of how art intersects with science all the damn time. Do you have any other? All the time. Yeah, do you have any other examples that people probably wouldn't think of immediately of how STEM is used in creative fields? 
Yeah, yeah, the, all the EA games, every single one of them, every Marvel movie you've ever seen, uh, every, every, you know, Jim Cameron movie you've ever seen. Um, you know, Facts. even some stuff you don't even know in the background. I mean, I had a friend, my, my colleague from film school, he made The Matrix 2 and 3. He made <laughs> The Island. He Ooh. made Jumper. He made The Last Samurai. He made all those in a row. He, he burnt out. <laughs> he made so many movies. Um, and, and I made video games in my career. I made the first Law & Order video game, which is weird, but it was on the CD-ROM. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. I didn't even a know lot of a video game. Wow. Either. Oh my God. And also, are you comfortable? You know what the deal is. A lot of people, when they're choosing careers, yes, they do think to themselves, is this going to add to well-being? But they also think to themselves, how is this going to add to my bank account? Please, just throw out some numbers <laughs> of the potential yeah. one can make from lowest to highest. Yeah, so the lowest these days, the lowest is like 80000 a year, 60000 a year maybe. 60,000 was like pretty oh, bad. Entry 80, level. Entry level. Don't know nothing. I was about to curse, but don't know nothing. Um, <laughs> and, like thousand. and the highest level, like wow. engineers, um, if you're like, I'm an OG. I've been around 30 years almost. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it like about 500 to 700,000 for the top. top. Oh wow. I think that's incredible. I, you know what? I want to add to that just a little bit. And thank you so much for calling into the show, Don and Marie. We appreciate you. Um, this is Heather. But my question, too, with all of your education and just being so ahead of the game, is it hard? Like, I mean, already Sway knows this. We already know women. We're just smarter than the fellas. We know that, Al. But is it hard to meet somebody? <laughs> is it hard to meet somebody? Do, do, do people get intimidated when they just hear your mate? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really pump Academy Award knowledge too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, because this is it's, it's a distraction. I'm really here for the people. You know, I can't take it. So I'm really here to to help the people. But but I say, you know, I really confessing. You know, I don't have an engineering degree. Right. Wow. Okay. You what? Know, I, <laughs> I, I'm self-taught. I'm a self-taught engineer who learned all these Crazy. things and learned AI and learned data and all that. I didn't. I didn't take. I took maybe three engineering classes. My whole maybe four. Wow. So, wow. So you know, it's 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 not something you have to you have to be you know a certain way or be a certain people just people just you know are just taught to think on one little path, right? Which is like, mm -hmm. oh, I got to go to community college and college then. You don't have to do any of that. I mean, you know, we have now, we are partnered with Microsoft and we've been working on that partnership for a while and, and they, they'll take a barista. They'll take a stay-at-home mom. Anybody who wants to learn, they'll take in their apprenticeship program. People don't even know it exists for the most part. I mean, there's there's like maybe 20 or 30 apprenticeship programs. There's uh, companies that give up to a million dollars per company in software if you want to start a company. I mean, there's and that's how Chris and I really met because I was that allowed to an investor. I was like, what about all these programs? Like, do you know about them? And the investor who was a black investor didn't know about them. And he's at the top of his field. So that tells you a lot, right? Is, uh -huh. is, uh, mm -hmm. People wow. just don't know what's going on. There's a disconnect. Yeah. And so that's what we do at Day360. We really are bringing all that to the people, you know, so they really want on. Data 360, and that's your company. So you went from being the the VP of a startup that eventually became o AOL. Heather, she said, "Y'all, y'all, y'all ever hear that AOL?" I um, still got AOL, and okay. I still got, and I still have an Android. So whatever, Sway, I know where you're going with this. Okay, okay, I was just gonna say, <laughs> I knew Heather would know what AOL is. She still Shut got up. that ring. But um, wow. <laughs> still hear that noise. <laughs> But the purpose of this conversation <laughs> was just to really uh, talk about Marie's journey and um, partnering up with Urbana May, the company that I partnered up with, uh, and Chris Walker in this initiative called Open Spaces. We're really trying to get our kids interested in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And when you look at statistics of you know uh, black men and black women or, or uh, uh, black and brown men and women, uh, we make up such a small percentage of scientists, engineers uh, uh, working in science, uh, engineering, that it's, it's almost as if it's being it's purposeful, Chris. And so open spaces is to counteract all of that and, 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 
and present it to our youth in a way that's relatable and not so much intimidating, correct? So can you talk to us about what open spaces is? And then we got people calling in. So how can oh, they find good. out how can they find out more? Where do they go? How do we get our kids involved? He just talked about making a three quarters of a million dollars and she don't even have a, a degree in engineering. So it doesn't take that to get to where she is, is what she's saying. That a lot of times we fear that process. We don't have the resources, we don't have the money, we don't have all of those things. So uh, what what do you what do you say to that, Chris? Yeah, definitely. And that's one of the, the things that we've seen, you know, in our research when we started developing this is, you know, that's one of the top issues, you know, from our community is that kind of lack of resources or fear thereof. And to what Marie said, you know, a lot of the tech companies are starting to take those barriers down. So if you have interest and you have aptitude, they're working with you now. So that's part of what we're doing with open spaces is really kind of connecting the dots and stem, you know, for our community. And one of the things that we're really focused on is this idea of building uh, your STEM identity, right? So if you have a strong belief in self, you know who you are, you know what you want to do, using, you know, kind of having fun with comic book storytelling, building that STEM hero and that kind of hero journey that you want to have in STEM to make your mark. So that'll be part of what we're doing with some of the training sessions. We're going to be having office hours uh, where we'll be working with different professionals and companies where, you know, kind of like what we're doing here to be like an open format where they'll talk for an hour and call in. Um, you know, uh, we'll figure out which platform it's going to be, but where, you know, you can have that kind of open conversation uh, with someone who is a professional. And then we're talking to various brands who are across the, you know, spaces, um, to help us bring those resources. Because a lot of times, like Marie said, you know, there are a lot of these resources that a lot of companies have put together, but they maybe aren't packaging it or talking about it in a way that our community is, you know, hearing or it might be in a different space. So we're partnering with them and then, you know, helping to bring those uh, resources. So if you go to urbanime.com and uh, just sign up for our news, we'll, um, send out more information as we go towards our launch. And what we're looking at is a February um, is a February kickoff uh, where we're going to do our mixtape that we've done before, but this time it's going to be focused on black women in tech because uh, we really believe that black women in tech are an aspirational group for anybody, uh, you know, having their own, their own journey in STEM, but especially black and brown folks and really elevate the kind of uh, stories and heroes, you know, like someone like Marie, so that we can put that out there and, and then kind of, you know, start that journey over the year. And our big thing that we're trying to say is, you know, permission not required, right? Like you don't need permission to be in STEM. You don't need permission to be in tech. You don't need permission to be in science. And that's where, you know, this uh, initial, um, you know, celebration state in our EP, which is like a love letters. And we, you know, flipped it is, you know, we don't want it to be like, oh, well, here's another love letter from our community to STEM, right? I think black folk in particular, we've had enough of loving people and things that don't love us back. And so we were like, how can we flip that? How can we make it so that it's a love letter from STEM to our community, appealing to our community for our ingenuity, our creativity, and everybody, you know, here knows, right? Like we invent things, we invent culture, you know, we change narratives, you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think last year, uh, you know, or last year we said the nation, so, you know, for me, I'm like, STEM needs to have a conversation with us and that setting that state. And we found, you know, some really people to have that letter and that appeal. So, again, go to urbanime.com, sign mm -hmm. up for the newsletter. We'll be doing more. Download the STEM EP. I want to give a shout out to Leticia Wright um, from BioBus. You know, a lot of very interesting people who wrote letters, um, BioBus. Um, what they do is they help the community by actually going into neighborhoods and teaching kids uh, science. And it's a bus that helps K through 12 and college students and actually goes around uh, to neighborhoods where you can discover and explore science and understand, hey, is this something uh, that I want to do? So we'll be promoting and bringing more things like this to so that people can see it. Mm, Leticia Wright, um, all, well, um, K. Renee Horton, Ph.D., um, and uh, Wilson Faust um, in, in engineering. Uh, K. Renee Horton, who has a PhD, is uh, speak, writing a letter um, through mathematics, right? And so, oh, yeah. I, actually, what? it's uh, Jessica. We are talking to um, uh, Dr. Horton, and we're going to work with her 
you know, hopefully uh, during the launch. But I was able to speak with um, Jessica, who's an astrophysicist. Uh -huh. And so her whole world, when we were talking, she was like, but Chris, like, you know, you want a math letter. She's like, you know, I'm not necessarily math. And I'm like, hey, for me coming from the art side, all those equations that you do, <laughs> that's math to me. That's you know? math, so right? just, right, that's... hearing those perspectives, you know, is really interesting. Okay, so we got a lot of calls. So, citizens, I, 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 you've heard me mention Urbana May before, and I'm going to continue to mention Urbana May. We have a lot of things coming up uh, moving forward, but you spell it U R B A N I M E dot com. Urbana May. Yep. Dot com. Check it out. I got Mike Muse on the line, citizens. We got Mike Muse. He Mike, he heard Mike, Mike. he heard we was talking Mike. about STEM. He he ended up calling in, man. Mike said Mike, you Mike has an engineering degree. Mike yep. has it. Marie Meet Mike Muse. Chris, you know Mike Muse. He has an engineering degree and he's also a sports commentator. That's a whole nother side of him. But Mike, <laughs> welcome to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good morning, everyone. Happy to be on the call. And congratulations to you guys and for what you're doing. It's really, really important. And it's, it's, it's uh, Mike, you, you since day one, always talked about the importance of them and us um, being involved. And, and, and so I, I'm sure you heard about what's going on here. And then uh, even, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, and, with, you know, one of the reasons that I, I, when you look at research, you see how small the percentages of us that are involved in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, e mathematics, even majors in college, you know, is something that work on. Why? Why do you? What? What? What got you into STEM, Mike Muse? Uh, it's a really great question. Um, I, when I was in high school, uh, my teachers, when we were just talking careers. Uh, my team noticed that I was really good at math and in science, and they encouraged to pursue uh, interest in engineering um, very early on, probably I would say my sophomore year of school. Uh, and then at that moment, I just kind of got ushered into a lot of STEM programs within my city. And so uh, I can't believe I have to say their name now, but Michigan State. Uh, I did like a summer <laughs> engineering camp. <laughs> it's going to be okay, Mike. <laughs> I know. I can't believe I had to even give them some type of credit for my success and where I am today. But nonetheless, <laughs> I did summer engineering academies uh, at Michigan State. I took classes at Michigan State. Um, I also took the classes at Atlantic Community College around engineering curriculum and courses. And so I kind of got really indoctrinated really soon and early um, into STEM. And then I just realized the possibility existed uh, within the STEM career. And that really was my intro uh, into STEM. That is. Uh, well, meet Marie and, this, um, and Mike Muse up and us out on our initiatives down the line. I just threw that out. To, he don't know yet, Chris, <laughs> but we just hired him. Uh, let's talk to some of the. <laughs> let's talk to Welcome to Sway. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Uh, let's talk to some of our callers. We got a ton of callers. Let's go to the area. And this is why. Come on, let's go. We got Terry from the Bay. What up, T? How you doing? Hey, Terry. Roger. Terry, Hello, are you there? Hello, Terry. Yes. Yeah, I'm here. How y'all doing? Grand Rises. How hey. you doing? Good, good. I just wanted to call and encourage some uh, youth, you know, to step into the STEM field. I'm a black woman in engineering, and I work out here in the Bay Area in the automotive industry. Um, and I went to school for it. Um, and I also wanted to talk to Marie and her if she's ever programmed music uh, with computers. Because I had a class where... I program music um, like coding, and I actually made music doing coding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that a lot, actually, in my spare time, right? Uh, I used to program with a, a program called Acid, and I used to love making tracks and beats. Now, I don't know how to make tracks. I don't spit bars, but I know how to track. Okay. Uh, nice, I made nice. a few little beats for myself and remix. I did a remix of Marvin Gaye a long time ago, like that. But, uh, yeah, I always did that. And, and in fact, like, uh, Chris and I were talking about so much, you know, we met we met through through music and all that. And, you know, Pharrell uh, sponsored a program called Black Ambition, and uh, that's how we met. We met about music, talking about music, talking about anime, talking about programming, all that. So yeah, you know, music is is wonderful. It's wonderful to, to program, and uh, you know, a lot of programmers are music geeks, and a lot of music geeks are programmers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, exactly. You know, we we run neck and neck. People don't really know that, but it, it's really true. Yeah. Yeah, That's... I was happy to find my, my passion between music and earning and being able to go into that fit. 
I also went into audio engineering uh, within the automotive industry. So it's definitely a good field to go into. And like Tracy G said earlier, you know, you can be creative in this field. You can make a lot of money in this field. And yeah, I just really want to encourage other youth, especially black women, to get into the STEM field. There's not a lot of us in the offices, but definitely a great field to get into. Love. Thank you, sis. Terry, thank you for calling. What part of the Bay? I'm in San Francisco. Okay, that's what's up. You in the just city? Moved, just moved out here from Detroit. Oh, you loving it? What what, what area in San Francisco? Uh, like San Mateo. Oh, geez. Okay, she getting money, y'all. She living in San Mateo. She getting money. So get your engineering degrees, like Terry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank sure, you, Terry. Yeah, you a citizen, absolutely. Sweet uh, morning. Yep. Uh, we got Gavin from New Jersey on the line. Grand Rice is Gavin. Jersey, stand up. Hey, hey. Grand Rice, what's going on? What's happening, man? What's up, Sway? How you doing, sir? What's up? I'm chilling, man. Hey, I came in at the, uh, at the tail end of your conversation about the STEM program. I'm a biochemist uh, major at Seton Hall. I wanted to see what information I can do to help. I'm actually going on my second career. I did 26 years in the Army, and okay. I'm working on my second career, like I said, in uh, biochemistry. So I wanted to know, it's not a lot of us. Uh, Africans in the science and technology field. So I wanted to see what I could do to help. Chris, you want to jump in? Yeah, I'm here. Like, uh, you know, send us an email. We'll, um, you know, uh, Sway, if you can, how we do it on there. But if we can get your info, if you just send it to at urbanime.com and actually anyone who's listening, if you're interested in open spaces and working with us, if you send it, uh, an email to info, uh, at urbanime.com. We're really excited to work with professionals like yourself because, you know, I'm a power book artist and I have things, but it's really using it as a platform to help you and tell your, and tell the story of how we're needed. So definitely. What, what made yeah, you, and, um, and, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say real quick and Chris, don't forget. He, he did in our, our, we started our collaboration also called hip hop hackathon. And it's a uh, hip hop hackathon.com. You can also participate in that. We're recruiting different, professionals and things like that we're just we're just barely starting that but uh that's gonna be a great project as well that we're collaborating on together yeah okay we're really excited about that using the culture as a way to again get people in and talk what they're doing i love how you know like you said like i'm an engineer and a musician right there that's that's literally what we're trying to and what we're trying to appeal to Gavin, so that's oh. info at, at, at urbanime.com what made you go into biochemistry uh, <laughs> actually, I was I graduated with my undergraduate in a biology as a biologist. Uh -huh. uh, I got a job working in the perfume film industry, and uh, actually, they wouldn't let me get in the lab. They wouldn't let me work. So uh, they said I didn't have quote unquote enough lab experience. But other of my coworkers and peers that had a lesser degree than I was was actually in doing chemistry. So I decided that hey, if you're not going to give it to me, uh, if you're not going to let me work in the lab and do what I what I'm good at and I'm very good at. Uh, I'll just go and get the paper to alleviate one of the two reasons why not in the lab, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we no longer asking for permission, Gavin, so you right on, on right on track with us. Please reach out, man. And I, I took down your number. I hope you don't mind, okay? Oh, no. Uh, I, I would like for you guys to call back because I'm driving. I'm in the car getting my wife something to eat before I get beat up. So. Okay, cool. Man, you got a lot going on, brother. Yep. You better get that. Get that sandwich. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass this to uh, my man Chris, and we'll have somebody reach out. Okay? Thank All right, you, thanks bro. a lot, man. Thank you. That's what no we problem. need, that kind of participation, Great man. You're a citizen. Thank you for Wait your service to this country. All right, uh, I'm going to take one more. Uh, Nakia is in Dallas. Grand Rises, Nakia. Hey, Nakia. Ooh. Grand Risings to all of you. I listen to you guys every day on my way to work. Y'all are my calm, my key, and y'all keep me hip-hop. Hear me? That's what's <laughs> up. <laughs> I like that. So I'm a radio broadcaster from Dallas, Texas, and I have a daughter that's been in STEM since she was 10 years old. Wow. They even have this program in Lancaster, Texas, where she goes to school. But what happened was she went to a program, watched her do it, and they put her in front of a contestant situation she won. And she's been doing it every since. Draws on her computer. She's into this. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted to keep going with it, but I know there are so many other black children and brown children. If we would affect their lives with this right here, we could get a lot of them off the streets and a lot less killing happening. And that's my pride. Let's get these kids off the streets 
stop letting them get killed by society and stupid. Let's let's raise the culture. There you go. I like that. You got to salute the parents. I that, love uh, that. Yeah, that uh, parents got to be minded to that. You know, a lot of times our, what intimidated us or our fears get in the way of what we what we want for our kids. So I appreciate an open and supporter of your daughter, Nikia. You're a citizen. You're a citizen. Swing them on in. Swing them on in. Heather, I know you got to go to Urban View, correct? Yes, I do. I'm headed over to Urban View, citizens. Thank you guys so much for every God bless. Keep doing what y'all are doing. We appreciate it. And, of course, um, love you, citizens. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, HB. Channel 120. I'm going to take this one call. Wes from Massachusetts, Chris and Marie and Mike. Um, he wanted to talk about federal grant programs. Go ahead, Wes. Grant, welcome to the show. Hey, Wes. Hey, how's it going, Sway? Can you, want, you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Go ahead. You All got right. some information Perfect. for us? Absolutely. So what I do is I, I work out of West Springfield, Massachusetts. What I do is I write uh, state grants to help students that are from unrepresented groups. For instance, uh, first-generation college, students of color. Uh, what we do is we try to line them up with career paths that are high demand um, regarding uh, regional employment demand. You guys can use this uh, tool. Um, every region has uh, information that's vital to students, um, especially those that are coming from underrepresented groups, low income, uh, first generation college students, English as a first language. Um, you know, this is something we need to shine across the United States. Um, I'm actually a doctoral student at Northeastern University, and uh, my uh, dissertation in practice is basically trying to prepare students for uh, the real world and uh, trying to change this 200 year old system that uh, is not really helping many people. Hmm. Um and, and 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 what? How did you learn about writing the grant? What 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 made you go that down that path? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I started off as a mathematics teacher, um, and I worked with middle school and high school age students in um, Springfield, Massachusetts, um, which is a tough, uh, very diverse um, population. Um, realized to help these kids transition, you know, out of high school. Um, you know, the math is great and all. We need to learn the application of that. So. I uh, learned about a uh, program that we had at West Springfield Mass called Innovation Pathways. And uh, basically the whole point of that is, like I said, preparing students for uh, high-demand careers and also lining Oh, man. Learning, okay. you know, how oh, I went through a tunnel there. I apologize. Um, okay. So I also I line students up with early opportunities so that they get call early college for free. Uh, and then I help them get internships and jobs at uh, – you know, high demand uh, employment opportunities like medical centers for healthcare, um, information technology, computer science, all that. We just got to get kids interested and engaged early on, not waiting until they're in 11th, 12th grade, you know, take these uh, types of career decisions that'll impact their entire life. Well, listen, Wes, um, info at urbane.com, man. We need people like you to join our movement. You down? Definitely. I'm 100% down, Clay. I really appreciate you taking my call, and uh, I, I, I love what you're doing out there. Oh, Aww. thank you, man. And uh, let me take your number down, too. But definitely hit us up at info at urbanime.com. And we'd love to hear from you, brother. Thank you, Wes. Uh, you're a citizen. You're a citizen. Wait a minute. All right. And Calvin in Chicago built a Chicago. Uh, he built a, a program dedicated to STEM for children of color. Thank you, Calvin. Salute wow. to you. USO in San Jose um, has the kids with disability to learn STEM. Thank you, USO. Anthony in Buffalo wanted to say props to Urbana. We would love for all y'all to reach out to us at info at Urbana, U-R-B-A-N-I-N-E dot com. Let us know you heard us on this show. Marie, I want to thank you. We got to have more conversations. This is the first of many. Marie Smith, give her a round of applause. Thank you, Marie. Yes, Marie. Such a queen. Thank you. And, and Thank people, you. I want to get I want to get one quick shout out to uh, Google as well because Google is partnering with us, putting together hackathons and putting together all this, and they're going to be a part of hip hop hackathon too. And uh, they got a lot of programs. We have a lot of lots of conversations. There's okay. lots of programs out there. Okay, and hackathon, which is if you want to um, learn more about hackathon, where do they go? Hiphophackathon.com. There it is. Easy money. Mike Muse, thank you for joining the convo. I know we be talk, you know, we, we probably was going to talk about uh, some other things, but I, I don't know, man. I like I, I like that we had a chance to have this conversation. You could call back tomorrow if you want to do some more political news, Mike. <laughs> that laugh says it all. <laughs> okay, Tracy, just happy to be of service. They're there to help uplift the movement. It's awesome. So, Ken, great. Hit me up. I am Mike Mew, you, S and Sam E on Twitter and Instagram. 
All right. Thank you, Mike. I'll talk to you later, brother. We appreciate you, man. Uh, Chris. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> and then, Chris, people want to reach you. Let them know how to reach you, brother. Yeah, definitely. So I'm uh, Chris.Walker at Urbanime, U-R-B-A-N-I-M-E.com. Or like we said, info. If there's, you know, you want to be part of open spaces, we're happy to send you uh, information. And then, you know, um, you can go to our site today, sign up and get the STEM EP. I want to you know, some warm regards and shout outs to Letitia Wright for pinning the science letter, Marie Smith for pinning the, te- uh, the technology letter, uh, uh, Will South for pinning the engineering letter, and to Bolin for pinning uh, the mathematics letter. Uh, check them out. And I wanted to give a shout out um, that's also going to be part of the uh, Chabot Space and Science Center, which you know, Sway, from being out in Oakland. We're going to be partnering with them and helping them with various initiatives at um at the center uh including some of their initiatives that have to do with uh space exploration and building your you know kind of imagining worlds and that sort of thing through the lens of them so we're very excited and you can tell there's just good energy here and there's a lot of us in the community that this is what we do and we hope open spaces becomes that platform for that energy and that outpouring uh like the caller said so that we can get our people and even our, you know, right out of young people into these jobs and pursuing the things that they're passionate about. And one of the things that I'm, I'm really serious about is no one has the ability to take that passion away from you. The same way I was fortunate enough to have people like that allowed me to pursue art and storytelling and all that stuff. Uh, I want the same thing for people in STEM. If you love it, then let's get behind you as Urbanime and let's, you know, help brands and community and culture be behind you. Urbanime.com. And, and, and I didn't tell you this part, Chris, when I was in elementary, Imagine the elementary, um, uh, the court, the class I was in. We was we spent a week at the Chabot uh, Space. Uh, what is it? It was called something else, though. Chabot Science Center. I feel I feel like it was called back then. And so every day, instead of going to class on campus, we went there. And um, and as these people were really teaching us about STEM, we didn't understand. It wasn't called STEM. You know, it, you know, it wasn't phrased like that at that time, but it was. It's an amazing place, so I'm glad it's reopening, and I hope. And we're gonna do more promotions about that. I want to send a lot of kids there. It's an amazing place to learn. Uh, Tracy, uh, thank you, Chris. Tracy, and welcome back. They can reach you where? Thank you, Callaway Citizens. Love you guys. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram at it's Tracy G I T S T R A C Y G. Also, for all of our citizens who are in San Diego or around that area. I'm actually going to be flying out to San Diego um, a little later today to join my Michelob Ultra family for a couple projects. One that y'all can join me for is the cycling experience and live concert that they're having November 10th, which is Wednesday. It's going to really fire um, the superstar cycling instructor. Damar Jackson is going to be a part of it, as well as um, Zed, multi-platinum Grammy award-winning artist, DJ, producer. Go to Michelob Ultra Movement Live. Dot com Michelob Ultra Movement Live dot com to get your tickets if you're interested. That's dope, Tracy. Uh, and uh, so welcome back. Thank you again, Marie. Let's have more conversations, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah.